Okay, let's talk about line weights. So this is the drawing that we're working on, and I'm really building this thing up in reverse, if that makes any sense. But I'm showing you how to do the things that are most important, and um, things like shadows uh, I'll cover a little bit later. So um, I think the next, having covered layouts, the next thing we need to look at is how you actually set up line weights in Rhino. So um, it's important to have the Layers tab open. And if we pull this over, you can see, and right now we're just in model space, and um, you can see that we have no line weights. Let's confirm that. So let's type print display, which is how we can begin, begin to show uh, line weights. Here the thickness is set to 100, which is fine. We hit enter, and nothing happens. So we don't, we have, we don't have any line weights. Uh, we can set line weights in several different places. So for example, um, if I, I'm just in the default layer, I draw a line, I could um, come down to properties and I could um, make the print width um, instead of by layer, I can um, select something like 0.5 and enter and oh, nothing's happening. So let's see why. Let's see if I type print display. Um, the state is off. Okay, so let's toggle that on. Okay, there we go. Now we're seeing a line weight. Um, elsewhere we don't have line weights, but now I have this thing. It's in the, on the default layer. Um, if I draw another line on the default layer, it doesn't have that line weight. And I need to select this and come back into the properties, go to print width, and I can change it from by layer to something else like 0.9, a little bit thicker. Okay, so you can set things individually. However, it's usually better to organize all of the lines that you want to be um, a certain weight on the same layer. Uh, because we can also set the print width in the layers tab, and that becomes a much more efficient way of doing it. So um, hopefully you've figured out by now, if you make a layer, and um, let's make two new layers. If I drag layer two into layer one, now I have a folder of sorts. Um, so you can have layers within layers. So in this drawing, I have a, um, a layer called 2D. And inside of this layer, I have a number of other layers which have all of the um, 2D lines that I need to set up this drawing. Uh, so I have the def uh, default lines in a layer called lines. I um, have a number of other layers related, related to uh, the figures, the scale figures. Um, let's see, the section lines will be the section cuts. If I turn that off, you can see that the section cuts go away and so on. So um, you need to, uh, we can assign some line weights here and um, I, you can have as many as you want. Uh, I would recommend starting with two or three, um, maybe a um, you know dark, medium and light. Uh, light in my case will be the sort of default line weight. So um, let's see, these lines, the lines that show, uh, let's say things in elevation, right? So this is the edge of a surface. I'm going to want that to be my um, lightest line weight or my um, intermediate line weight. And um, <clears throat> let's call them for this drawing our lightest line weight. And so how do I set all of those uh, lines at once? Um, at, well, let's start with the section, actually, because that's going to be an easier place to see it. So in my layer section line, I want to come here and um, select the print width. And um, I'm going to go down to 0.35 millimeters. Hit OK. And now um, section line. Why is that not showing up? Let's look at our print display. The state is on, the thickness is 100, the print width. So let me pause this and see what's going on. Okay, I figured out what is going on. 
So when I selected this line and looked in the properties, the print width was set to default. Um, typically, by default, it's not the default line weight, but this setting is by layer, set to by layer. So if I um, click that over to by layer, um, now the line weight that we've assigned to the layer is showing up. Okay, uh, why was that set to by default? It's because this geometry I copied and pasted in from, a, um, from another file. So I just want to come over here and uh, set the print width for all of these objects to by layer. And let's set the print color also to by layer. Okay. Now, it's very easy to see where our section cut lines are. And that's because all of those lines are on this layer, and now this layer has the default print width, print width of um, 0.135. Okay, so let's just quickly assign some other line weights. Uh, lines, my uh, default line weight is going to be uh, 0.13 millimeters. So from doing some testing, on 11 by 17, printing things out. These seem to be uh, good line weights. However, uh, you're gonna want to test things with your own drawings. And you know, it's not a bad idea maybe to just make a layout in which you begin to put a number of line weights and assign them different, or put a number of lines, assign them different line weights, print them out, so you can begin to get a ballpark uh, sense of how dark to make things. So these are the um, line weights, the only line weights that I think I need right now. Uh, let's look at the shadows actually. Uh, so the way I, I've set up the shadows, and I'll show you how I generated these in a little bit, but the, um, I have a, a black hatch as the base hatch for the shadows. And uh, um, then I also have this line work, uh, which we can't see because that's also black. So this is a, a good point to talk about um, print color, right? Uh, right now, the, um, the color for the display is, um, is black. If I change this to white, um, it's still showing up black in our viewport because um, I have print display on. So I need to come over to print color, and if I set this to white, I should see. Oh, I'm. Am I in the wrong? I'm in the wrong spot. That's why I want this to be black. Um, I want this to to be black because that's that's actually the layer for our basic our, our base hatch. Um, here, if I change this to white, okay, it's still black. Now, if I come to print color, now it should turn white. Okay, great. And um, and so now, if I turn on the base shadow, uh, we get this. So I might want these lines to be a little bit darker so they um, they pop and aren't just completely, um, you know, sort of um, drowned out by the, by the black tone. So I'm going to make this a slightly um, darker line weight and this will be a 0.18 millimeters. There we go. You can see that they brighten up a little bit. Okay. Um, and again, this uh, print display, you can see that the lines pretty much stay a constant width on your monitor. So as you scroll out, um, they appear to be heavier. Uh, but again, we're just seeing the relative weight. So our, for example, our 0.35 um, line weight is showing up heavier than our uh, 0.18 line weight, and both are showing up heavier than our uh, 0.13. So this is a, a good way to kind of get the range of uh, line weights that you want in your drawing. Now, um, you'll notice down here that I don't have any details yet. And Rhino gives you a lot of flexibility um, in setting up line weights, uh, as we'll see in, um, in a little bit. So you can actually assign uh, different line weights to the same geometry in different um, layout viewports. Uh, the reason why I, I sort of backed up, deleted all of the viewports from this drawing, because if you set up your line weights in Rhino, uh, in the model space to start with, with um, affiliated with the layers, uh, when you generate the layout for the first time, those line weights will populate the, um, the viewports in, in that first layout. 
and, um, and subsequent layouts as well. So whenever you make a viewport, the line weights that you set up here will be the line weights that begin to appear in those viewports. However, um, as you make new viewports, you may decide to change the line weights. So I'll show you how that works right now. All right, so I'm going to set up a viewport. So again, to add a, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to set up a layout. So I'm going to do a little plus sign down here, new layout. I can probably also type layout. So if we type layout, yeah. So if I type layout, um, let's set up an 11 by 17. So 11, 17 wide, 11 tall. Uh, detail count, let's make one, hit OK. All right, now it's defaulting to showing everything. So I'm going to uh, double click into the layout here. And I'm going to zoom in on the drawing, start zooming in on the drawing that I want to show. OK, so I don't want that line to show up, so I'm just going to hide it. And now I'm going to click the viewport. I'm going to set it to a specific scale, which is um, 1 8th. It looks like I need this to be a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to adjust the layout. Oops. I think I can just grab one of these and yeah, pull that up. There we go. Um, so now I'm back in here. I'm being careful not to zoom and just pan over. OK, and now I'm going to lock this. So um, again, we're not seeing line weights, and that's because, as I explained in the last video, we need to turn on, we need to set the print display for the layout independently of the um, model viewport. So I'm going to type print display, hit enter. By default, the state is off. I'm going to toggle it to on. OK, now we see our line weights. OK, cool. Now, if we come back to our layers over here, you can see that we have a bunch more uh, stuff over here. So there are more columns now than what we started with. If we go back to the perspective view, or let's say the top view, which we were looking at before, you can see that we don't have many columns here. But when I go to the first layout, you can see now that we have more columns. So not only do we have the line type, the print color, and the print width, but we have the layout, the lay, we have the layout color, we have the, um, we have, let's see if we can, we need to drag this over even more. And see, we have the layout print width. So you can actually um, assign different widths for printing um, over here than, uh, I'm sorry, in the layout and between layouts. Uh, they don't have to be the same as one another, like the, the, the print widths on one layout don't have to be the same as the print widths on other layouts. And um, the print widths in the layouts don't need to be the same as the print widths from the model viewport. However, if you set up your print width in the model viewport to begin with, every time you make a new layout, it will use that as the starting point, right? So for my lines layer in the um, in the detail, I'm sorry, in the layout, I have this print width of 0.13, which is exactly the same as what I set up in the um, in the model viewport. So um, let's just go ahead and duplicate this. Um, so I'm going to make a copy. Actually, just so that we don't get confused, I'll make a new one. I'm going to make a new detail. Hold on a second. And that's not working. So oh, that's because I have something going on up here. So let's make a new layout. Page two. Let's make this one portrait and we'll make it 11 by or eight and a half by 11. So 8.5 by 11 inches tall. OK, cool. Now let's zoom in here. All right. Now we've got these guys. What is this scale? Um, one, so let's see, I think probably we can't get one eighth, we could get one sixteenth. There we go, great. So, um, all right, now let's say we thought that this section cut line was too dark. Let me go ahead and lock this thing. Um, now I could change this to, so we have the layout print width. I could change this um, 
section cut line. Let's find it. This is the section line. I could change, knock this down to something like 0.18. And that should have worked. So it didn't seem to change. Uh, let's see. And that's because the print width here is 0.35. Let's we change that to 0.18. OK, so now it changes. So um, you know what? It could be that when we lay out print width, it could be that I don't think this is overriding it. I do think that when we go to print it, it would be lighter. So let's see. Let's test that. So I'm going to hit. Um, actually, let me test it. And uh, I'm going to pause the video and then we'll, um, we'll confirm it. OK, I figured out what was going on. All right, so if we want to, it's um, so here's what's happening. When I change in when I'm in a specific layout and I change the layout print width, what that means is that if I make that layer, let's say the current layer, and then I put draw a line on that layer in the layout, in let's say the paper space of the layout, that's the width it's going to be assigned. Um, let's say, however, that I have things on that layer. So we have the section line, right? And we have things on that layer. And let's say we want them to print a little bit more lightly in this detail. What we have to do, and let's keep an eye on what's happening here. If we double click inside the detail, now we can see that the column changes to detail print width. Now, even though the default print width may be 0.35, I can change this to, let's say, 0.18. Hit OK. Um, and then click out of that detail. Now it's lighter. Now it's lighter. And it has nothing to do with this number, which I can change to default um, or whatever I want. And this is basically just saying like things that I put on this layer within paper space are going to have that line weight. However, uh, I can go into each detail individually and tweak the line weight for um, objects on that particular uh, layer, which can be a little bit confusing, but it gives you a lot of flexibility because we could um, have the same geometry shown at different scales using different line weights. And the same is true for line colors. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate if I can. Let's see if I go to this layout. For some reason, it's not letting me click that. Let's see if I can make a new layout. Page three, OK. All right, so something. All right, this happens from time to time where Rhino, um, the, the tabs down here don't work properly. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the recording and then um, come back at, with uh, multiple tabs. Um, when you encounter that, just save your drawing, close it, and uh, reopen it, and that should solve the problem. OK, I restarted Rhino. All of our tabs are now showing up. I, I deleted the third one. Uh, we only need two here, but I can easily toggle between these. All right, so let's say that we wanted to show a, um, a different line color. This can work in, uh, this works in exactly the same way. Uh, let's say I want everything in my section line to be, uh, my section lines to be shown in red. Um, but I only want it to happen in this one detail. If I double click this detail, I can come over to detail print color. And we want the section line. I can change the detail print color to, let's show it up on another monitor. There we go, to red. OK, and whoops, that's not working. That should work. Detail print color, detail color. All right, let's see what happens if we try to print this. Oh, you know why? It's working. It's just that when I closed Rhino, I have to type print display again, toggle it on. OK, cool. Now I see line weights and print color. So um, again, I don't see that 
uh, on when I'm not in the viewport, but when I double click in the viewport, I actually see the detail print color. Now it's funny because I don't see that color in the model space, right? Um, but that's the type of flexibility that Rhino gives you in setting up your drawings. Now, if I toggle back over to this layout, which has a different detail, you can see that this remains black. And if I wanted to change its color, I would have to double click in the detail, go to the detail print color, and then I could print, uh, I can select a different color, something like, you know, um, dark green. Okay, cool. Let's click out. Now I have dark green on this one, red on this one. So you can set these things independently. Uh, you can set the line weights independently, and you can set the um, print colors independently from detail to detail. And that's also true for details on the same page, right? So if I grab this detail and shrink it down, um, it's locked. Let me unlock it. Unlock it. Okay, I can move this thing up. Make a new detail. And I hit Add. Okay, I have this new, de new detail. I'm going to zoom in here. Um, you can see it goes to the default, which is black. And then I could double click here and um, change the detail print color to green. And now I have those two colors. Um, we could be working with line weights. Um, we could be working with colors. We can set all of those things independently in the details themselves. You just need to double click and jump in to change that. So in the next video, I'm going to, what am I going to show you? I will show you um, how to do shadows and, um, and hatches.